And the San Diego Kings were planning on a long playoff run, and why not? Saturday, they had the Las Vegas Royals down by 28 at the break, and Sumhoff let the Royals off the hook. They rallied to win the game 127-123. That means they got outscored by 30... 32 in the uh, second half. Here to talk more about that great news is uh, former Silver Pigskin winner and King's co-owner Abraham Muhazi. Abraham, thanks for spending the Monday. Thank well, you. When we booked this interview, the the plan was to promote your last home playoff game yeah, of the year. It's supposed to be this Saturday. We're supposed to have promoted this Saturday, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we did take that loss. We were up 28 and uh, just came out the second half. And you know, the beautiful thing about basketball is. You're never out of it. It's a game of runs, you know. <laughs> well, we're looking but we're at it. Right so what? I mean, I mean, I don't mean to be barbaric, but what the heck happened? You know, we came out the second half, and th those guys they wanted it more. And the thing with basketball is, it's a game of runs. It's a game of um, um, energy, intensity, and and those guys just had it in the second half compared to us in the first half, and. We came out on the wrong side. All right, well, let's just talk about a couple of your guys. That, uh, is it Brandon Rourke? Brandon Rourke, he just got uh, announced that he's uh, an ABA All-Star. This guy had three games over 40 points, averaged about 30 points a game, just an amazing athlete. Where's he from? He's actually from Kansas. He's been out here in San Diego. Uh, How do you the find these guys? Years. Social media, baby. Where I keep telling you, social media is where it's at, and uh, a lot of these guys got to see a lot of what we're doing on social media, and they get to see that, you know, that that network where they can actually go on uh, even further, like some of our guys that have, and uh, um, that's how they come to the Kings. And, and one of your guys that's uh, moving on, or tell me about your Trotters connection now. So, uh, Nathaniel Wright, uh, amazing athlete from Marietta, uh, played a little bit of uh, college basketball, ended up getting picked up by the Harlem Globe Trotters, and that all came about because one of our best players, Manny Puerto Rico Perez, um, just uh, came back from the Harlem so Globetrotters. that was the connection. That was the connection there. He said, hey, I have another guy that can jump because Manny was a jumper for them, a dunker. So they picked up Nathaniel Wright, and he's now bounce for the Harlem Globetrotters. Is, is, that, is that a good gig to have? Oh, you get it's to an see amazing the world, right? You get to see the world. You get paid to play basketball, entertain, and big groups, big crowds. And I get to see his Snapchats. He's in different hotel rooms in different cities, just living his best life at 24. I can't help but notice this. Uh, where, do, where do folks get the uh, King's Apparel? So you can actually get this apparel at, uh, at uh, san-diego-kings.myshopify.com. We just created an online store where you can get some of this uh, nice apparel with a Saquon and Attorney King Amanpour on it. And, uh, yeah, go out and check it out. You can get some of these hoodies and dry fit shirts. Uh, I, I got the yellow one, but I, wanna, I want the black one now. Um, I'll be back. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Biggest challenges. Uh, you now in your second year, you made the venue switch from Lincoln to El Cajon, your home, yes. where you're the Pope of El Cajon. <laughs> uh, talk a little bit about uh, the challenges of launching a, a team like this. So the challenges of launching a team uh, like the San Diego Kings is, you know, getting in the community and actually winning a fan base. I always tell people it's a lot easier to get a following on social media than it is to actually get a fan base. Because I remember the first games of the season last year when I first started, you got people watching. They're just like, I don't know what you got me here for, A, but this looks pretty cool. But now they're just super fans. But it's because we actually did the work of getting in the community, giving back, and sticking to our motto, which is community first. You bring it up. Winning in the community before winning in the gym. And that's what we've stuck to, and uh, that's definitely what we plan on doing to keep things going. This is some of the example of winning in the community. Well, the Junior Kings, these clinics, man, I'm telling you, get these kids young. They're fans for life, definitely. right? Definitely, and that's why you see a guy like Metal World Peace who is very interested in what we're doing, and it's mainly because of the lives we're able to affect in the community. And that, those are the ones that are create the fan base. So you got to start with these kids, you got to win them over to win their parents over, not just jump from the top down. Uh, you, uh, let's talk about another thing you're doing, Alumni United. Talk about the importance of that in the community. Definitely. So before I even started the basketball team, I started Alumni United, whose mission is to educate, inspire, and motivate our youth with athletes, entrepreneurs, and motivational speakers. So our off-season goal is to, uh, with Alumni United, by next school year, be able to start Monday through Friday, traveling through different schools. And whether it be the Kings that come in, the Padres, the Fleet, these local athletes to get them into the communities and into these different schools. And that's where we'll be able to win that fan base. And think about every kid in San Diego, if they actually get some type of apparel because of us, Alumni United, being able to visit, say with the Fleet or say with the Kings, and they can get a Kings shirt. I just think it would be awesome and build that community vibe. You brought up the importance of social media. Can you explain to folks what you do for the PPR when you're when the basketball season is over? As a, you're one of the guys' name on the trophy, and yet you give back to your show. You come back, 
tell them about IGTV and how that has blown up. So Instagram TV, when it came about last uh, last year, I came to you, Paul, first, and I said, hey, this is something I think would be huge. And you came back and said, hey, well, why don't you run it for me? And I thought, perfect, I'd love to work for the PPR. And you know, that was a blessing to be able to do that and be able to get uh, cheerleaders, football players, coaches, parents, people within the football community to actually send in their videos and create their own personalized IGTV. It just became huge, you know, being able to work the story and the IGTV. I love it. I didn't know what you were doing. One day I said, I'll, I'll check it out. Boom! 20 minutes went by. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's addictive. I'm telling you, I bet you that that was we were right on the cutting edge. It's going to be huge in 2019. Oh, for sure. I think it's going to be one of the biggest things for the PPR. And these guys using their phones now, it's going to be awesome. All right, so just we're down to our last 20 seconds. You got the uh, off season. Does this, you keep the team intact, or are you already looking for new guys? No, definitely. We're going to keep the team intact. We're going to uh, uh, and definitely look for new guys. New blood is always great. Looking for some of the best talent. But uh, looking for more people that want to get involved in the community. With this offseason, it's getting in the community because it's always community first for us. Can you, is your wrist okay? Can you do that? Sorry, we got it. All right. Uh, tonight <laughs> on the ASR, we only have two events, but they're two good ones. Plus, Maddie and Allison both have stories coming up in the 6 o'clock hour. Please stay with us. The KSI News at 6 p.m. is about to begin.